the F5 console. Look at that. Okay. The easiest way I can do this is real quick. I'm going to take you with me because there is a little bit more to this. Excuse the mess, it's my wife's car. And it's a farm car. If you notice, the front of the seat is up higher than the back. So it's not a lot, but a couple inches. So because of that, that actually sits your legs in a position where you're more comfortable. If your legs were straight out, it's like sitting at grandma's living room table or dining room table for three hours while all the adults used to gab when you were a kid. Felt like you were sitting on a board. So I just happened to have this piece which when I set it back here, I'll flip this back out. I'm gonna measure it first just to see because it may just be what we want. It is seven inches. So we'll put this in the back. Let's go ahead and cut another seven inch one. Now, this PVC comes in a 10 foot length, so you can, uh, you can make a bunch of mistakes. It doesn't really cost you a whole bunch of money, which is a good thing because don't we all? So I'll put this one in here. Oh, there went another screw. Okay. There you have the basics of how the seat will look. Now, I don't know how well you can see that, but it fits in there really nice. There's your front, your sides. Now, of course, I'm going to make this, and you'll love this too. I'm going to make this out of steel conduit. It's easy to bend. It's easy to replicate this. I can weld the uprights right into place. I can bend the back around if I want to, or I can put it, up, I can weld it straight up and down. I'll run a couple across the middle to the back, and then I have a place for the seat. I actually probably am going to do this one a little bit different. I haven't determined with so many problems in this chassis how I'm going to lay out the battery and stuff. So let me explain that. By the way, this is all taken under 15 minutes to make this. Well, as you can see, it doesn't have a whole lot of slope, but just by cutting the back end down another inch, I'll be set to go. That saves a lot on conduit later, because steel conduit, not only is it a pain, but it's more expensive. But back to where I was. So the battery, of course, has to go in a battery box somewhere. I've decided that it could go under the seat because the seat will be able to flip up or be removable. I was going to put it in the bed next to the fuel tank. However, my fuel tank that I've purchased is I think 11 and a half gallons, maybe 13, I'm not sure which, but it covers the whole width of the bed. So originally I had a smaller one. I didn't like it. It wouldn't have looked uniform with the battery box sitting next to it. So this way I can do that. I don't have a lot under the floor where I can recess it. Um, so I have to think ahead for that because not only is the transmission cooler going back in here somewhere so that it uh, it's out of the way of the front because if you look at the radiator where it sits compared to this 4.3 V6, you see that the transmission cooler they had is not only beat up, but it's, it, it's just not right. I may even be able to put it underneath, but I also have an AC condenser to go somewhere. So my thought was to put the condenser under the front of the, the oil pan, because it's all clear in there. I've got plenty of room with its own fan system. I'm putting an electric fan on the radiator. I also have a transmission cooler with an electric fan. So all of that's got to go under the car. And this just seems like the logical place to put the battery. 
So while we're right here and I'm doing this stuff, let's mock this up a little farther and let's see if a battery box will fit roughly under there because I happen to already have it. And if it does, we win. If not, I can go with a lower profile battery. I mean, it is a V6, so, so let's see. This is probably a ridiculously big battery box. I'll do it from the driver's side. Put it right in the middle just cause. Oh, let's get rid of that old hook. Wow, that's pretty close. If I go up an inch in the front, hmm, that does work pretty good. I can probably go with a lower battery box. This thing is, is huge. How tall is it? Oh yeah, this battery box is 11 inches tall. How tall is the battery? Where did I put the battery? There it is. Yeah, the battery is less than 10 inches high. So I could actually cut down that box an inch. Or get a shorter box. I think I like the idea of cutting down the box. Yeah, the battery would just reach the top of that. And I can get the old fashioned one with a strap instead of this trick latchy thing. So I may just do that. But there we go. Now I need one more thing that's, that is cured. So I'm gonna go ahead, let's cut the back of this out and just see where she lays. I'm just gonna go ahead and take an inch. I know I don't have to tell you guys, but I will anyway. If you're gonna buy a pair of PVC cutters, get a good pair. Um, these, I don't know if I dropped them or what I did, but they no longer cut straight, which is really irritating. Um, it's not critical. Because pretty much anything you cut in PVC is going to be sliding into something and be glued. So... All right, so remember we just took an inch off because we're working for our rearward slant. And I've got to go back over to the other side. Let me look at that. I don't know about you, but I think that looks pretty good. Um, my slant from front to back, if there was a flat surface. So the back is just under nine inches. The front is just 10 and three quarters. That should be pretty good. And you can do a little more with the foam. What you want is the very front, which is the back of your knee, you want up just a little bit and then your leg going down to your to the rear part of your body, your derriere, your rump, your butt, your ass, if it was, back here. So that's probably plenty. What I can do at this point, though, is I can go ahead and make this frame up. I can set a board on top of it with the conduit done just like this, and I can always lower the legs in the back. Now, this is going to be removable, but I'm gonna do it a little different. The, the floor pan on this 
is welded in. It's just gobbledygook welded. I'm going to clean all this up, but my thought is is to go ahead and weld a nut on here so that I can run a, a L bracket on the bottom of the conduit. I hope you can see this. Yeah, I guess you can. And, and then just run a bolt in, front and back. That'll be plenty. I'll go ahead and put another brace right here in the middle. It's easy to do, but I have the basics here. Now for the back cushion, the back cushion is totally different on this. One of the things that I found out in doing this was talking to people at car shows and stuff is that the back cushion is critical as far as seating. The reason that is, is because, let me see what's the easiest way to show you. So the width, the, the whole front to back in this thing is not real long. So if you figure, let me get this bucket. Amazingly, this thing hasn't leaked any water since that last video I did. There's maybe a cup in here, but it hasn't dripped at all. It sealed itself with rust. So from the seat front, all the way to where your brake pedal and all are gonna be is 27 inches. Now, that doesn't seem like a lot until I walk over here to the Cadillac and I measure from the front of the seat to the floor and it's 27 inches. So, and that's where I would sit in my wife's car. Now, only if I have the guts to let her drive. Okay, so we're pretty close to a, to a normal, more modern car, which isn't too bad. Originally with this seat way down low, which it was only, well, it was, it was right here. So it was nine inches total to the front and it was just a flat seat. Um, if I can find one, I'll throw a picture in so you can take a look at it. But so to get back here far enough where your back is against the back, the back cushion can only be a couple of an inch, a couple inches thick. So that's what we're gonna do there. We're gonna make it a couple inches thick. We can adjust it. I can tilt the bottom out a little bit if I need to, but it will just be attached to here by itself. It's not gonna flip forward. There's nothing back here. It's just gonna to attach to the back of the cab. The way I'm going to do that is there are bolts right here. I don't know if you can see them, but that attach this pan to the side corner, the sides of the body, I can go ahead and make a bracket here that it will slide under the pins on one side and then I'll make a little bracket that I can run a screw in from the side or something. We'll figure that out as we get to it. But, but this is a basic way to build a real simple seat frame. It doesn't matter what you're working with, whether it's a 57 Chevrolet, whether it's a Anglia, anything, real inexpensive way. Total cost in making this jig less than 20 bucks. Once I have it, if I want, I can glue it all together. I can throw it up on the shelf. And if somebody wants to buy a seat for a Model A pickup, I have a jig already. I can zip one together. I doubt anybody would want to buy one from me made out of conduit. But, you know, you paint it with bed liner. It looks real good. It'll do the job. It's plenty strong enough. And there you have it. We'll set this up so it has some storage. We'll have a place for the battery. The owner, which is as big as me, although not quite as chunky, will be able to drive his truck in comfort, which was the one thing when he bought this truck. We found it together. I found him a pretty good deal on it. But when he first sat in it, the way the steering column and the seats were, because he had ridiculous seats, I think I showed you those in another video, he couldn't drive it. His knees were literally touching the steering wheel no matter where you put them. The gas pedal was in a place where you, he couldn't even get his knee under the dash to get to the gas pedal. The brake pedal was ridiculous. So we had to make it either drivable or we had to make it drivable for somebody shorter. And I would much rather do this so that he's comfortable and can enjoy this truck for a bit than if he decides he wants to sell it to someone else a tall guy can actually enjoy the truck. So there you have it. Hope this video comes out well. I'm not gonna do a lot of editing because this is the first one back with a 
tablet and a laptop and hopefully we can make all that garbage work. Please like and subscribe. I can use all the help I can get. I don't get money from anybody, so it's not a big deal there, but it's just nice to know that people actually watch and, and maybe learn something out of my videos. So like and subscribe. Please give me a comment if you don't like what I'm doing. Um, and if you don't, it's not that I really care, but at least I know somebody's paying attention. Have a great day. Be safe. Add it in the middle. Edit, edit, edit. Well, it's a good thing you notice these things. If you look at the cab, it slants in quite a ways. So, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to narrow this up about five inches and then warm these up to bend them out a little bit.